There's lots of gun bunnies out there, but only one chocolate gun bunny, and that's yours truly, Zinga Harris. I'm out here with husband, Scott Harris. Say hello, Scotty. What's happening, world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's Father's Day. And what do you do on Father's Day? You do whatever the heck the father wants to do. Ain't that right, baby? So we're gonna go punch each other in the face. We're gonna hit mitts, and then we're gonna play it by ear after that. But this is why this is important. First of all, ladies, it's important for you to get a man that will be in shape, willing to lay his life down for you, and actually knows how to take care of himself. You don't want a weakling um, philosophically, spiritually, and also physically. And I certainly didn't get that when I got this guy. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna put our money where our mouth is. We talk about uh, self-defense all the time. We talk about getting in shape all the time. Uh, we've been consistently going to the gym, him more than me, to be honest. Um, still trying to get my body back in order. Uh, but we're gonna put our money where our mouth is and we're gonna go out here and do the dang thing. Uh, and we've got the baby with us and she's enjoying herself. And she's wondering what in the heck is mommy holding in front of her face? This is weird. You see her face is so cute. Anyway, let's do it. So what are we using today? What are we doing today? Well, basically we're just gonna do uh, simple combinations, ones and twos and the like, and then we're gonna switch back and forth. So this way you can learn how to properly mid hold. Okay, what's a one and a two? One, simple jab or a left cross, followed by right cross. Bread and butter combination. We'll do some other ones as well, but right now we're just kind of training Z to throw basic strikes and to get used to focus mitts, but also holding focus mitts. So what qualifies you to even do this, sir? What makes you think that you can teach people such things? Mm, I'd say about over a decade of teaching experience, thousands of hours into it, and I'm also certified in various martial arts systems, plus trained special forces operatives, uh, JSOC, SOCOM, a lot of, a lot of hands-on experience, literally. Will you put your hands on me? I already have. See this driller? Go! Bigger. Yeah, there you go. Go! 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 Good, elbows in. Go! Go. Last one. Go. Very good. Take a break. That concludes our primarily boxing lesson. So would you say that I'm getting better? I f it feels more natural. I think you're very, very talented naturally when it comes to this kind of stuff, so I think you're actually learning very quickly. So apparently I'm learning very quickly, which I'm very proud of. It's, when you first start doing it, it's really awkward because it's not like anything else you've done, um, unless you obviously have some kind of martial arts background, but holding mitts, punching stuff, doing the right technique, not just swinging like a hood rat uh, at the mall, like, slapping on somebody that stole your man or something <laughs> or like in Popeyes um, it's it like when you're actually doing the right technique and using your energy right and your body correctly it's a little bit awkward I'm not gonna lie but uh, once you do it a few times at least for me once I did it a few times uh, it doesn't feel as weird like I kept saying I, like the first few times I got a lesson from him, I was like, I feel weird. I feel like my body isn't right. <laughs> What's funny though is that she's actually doing really well very quickly. So um, like for instance, teaching people to bob properly and then come up for a counterattack, whether it's like a left hook or a right cross, she rolls and bobs very naturally. And that made me think, man, if I would known her when she was much younger, could have made her into like a junior boxing champion or something because she definitely has a knack for it. It would have definitely made me lift weights because your girl is skinny. Um, but I would say if you're interested in doing something like that, like boxing, um, BJJ, anything like that, and you've never done it before, go ahead and start. 
uh, I think the instructors, I would think that the instructors are used to like your first timers who've never done anything like that before so they know how to work with you. Yeah, my advice to first timers is, is that everything you do is going to suck, it's going to feel awkward, you're going to compare yourself to everybody else and you're going to be doing it wrong. That's fine. It's the same thing for them. No one cares. The biggest thing is that you just keep an open mind. And if you can keep an open mind and just turn off your self-consciousness as much as possible and just do what they tell you for like the first, usually it takes about six weeks to stop feeling like a moron. But after that, you just kind of like the class. Everybody's kind of in the same frame of mind where they're just trying to get better. So nobody really cares anyway. It's kind of like being the fat kid at the gym. Some people might make fun of you, but screw them. You're actually doing something to improve yourself. Uh, so I think moral of the story is to be the fat kid at the gym and screw them. I think it's about time people start getting in shape. I think Christians especially, we should be the most in shape, most vicious, most ready to... Lay the smack down. Yes, lay the smack down on people because that's real power. It's not power if you have to go berserk and see red to protect yourself and others. That's not power. Real power is the ability to slap a face and break a neck and choosing when to do so. It, well, if you ever talk to somebody and you start, you know, inquiring a little bit and prying a little bit into their experience and they're saying things like, well, you just don't understand my mentality, bro. Like, somebody pisses me, pushes me to a certain point or I get too pissed off, I just see red. Bodies hit the floor, all that sort of stuff. Well, the drowning pool lyrics aside, that, that doesn't happen that way. That's not how things work. Right? Adrenaline and anger are not going to save you against somebody who's physically stronger, has a better reach, and has even a modicum of training. What's going to end up happening is that you're going to end up getting taken to the ground and then someone's going to sit on you and either choke you out or punch you out. You have to be prepared, which means you have to have a modicum of training under your belt. That doesn't have to mean a lifetime commitment, but it does mean that you need to seriously get into BJJ and actually earn a stripe on a white belt. It means learning how to do basic headlocks, how to grapple with people of your size or even bigger, how to actually take a punch, how to throw a decent punch, how to understand that punches are not the answer to all of your problems, and in a lot of cases, they're not gonna do what you think they're gonna do. Um, fun, fun fact, it takes an average of about seven strikes to render an attacker incapacitated in an average fight. And this is collated data from thousands and thousands of fights. So that's why they teach a lot of people how to grapple, because you set them up with strikes, then you get them on their back, and then you choke them out. That's why MMA is a thing. That's why they fight like that in the MMA. That's why BJJ is kind of the number one martial art in the world right now, is because it works. So don't think about this as if something about your mentality or something about anger or you're gonna hulk out is, is ever gonna truly save you in a desperate situation. You can't count on that. What you have to do is you have to rely on training, good training, consistent training and muscle memory. That'll get you out of a jam. Well, there you have it, folks. That's straight from a, um, an expert. Don't rely on adrenaline rushes <laughs> to get you out of a jail. And I think that, uh, that there's a, that's a testament to women as well. Like, women don't normally say things like that, like, I'm going to hulk out and I'll protect myself. But somehow people think they'll get mama bear strength. And even I've said things like, I would lose my mind if someone did this, this, and this. And I mean that I would just get very, very angry. Not that I could actually do something about it but I wanna also be able to actually do something about it. I saw this video, Tim Kennedy posted it. He was, he was looking at a video of this woman who was pushing a stroller with a child in it, and the, the lady, someone comes up behind the lady and just starts dragging her, literally dragging her, and there was nothing, there was no fight instinct whatsoever to turn around and swing, to do a takedown, to even like run away. And even the one lady, Scott, you remember the lady who was getting out of the car, the stroller starts going into oncoming traffic, yeah. and she couldn't stop. She, she couldn't was stop so it. So fat and out of shape that her body dragged her forward. And she then couldn't she was get off the ground. To get off the ground because she was so out of shape and slumpy. Like that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Like yeah, there's assailants too, but there's also just if the stroller. <laughs> yeah, if your if your baby's in the stroller and it starts going in oncoming traffic, what are you going to do about it? Anyway. That's all I have to say. I've talked enough. Until next time, stay strapped, brothers and sisters, and I'll see you next time.